All right, welcome to episode one of our new video series from the National Training and Leadership School. Today we're going to talk about the Marine Corps League cover. I'm Craig Reeling, and I'm currently a member of the National Uniform Committee and the National Training and Leadership School team. So the official word on covers comes out of the National Administrative Procedures in Closure 3, Section 5, uh, and it's listed as Roman numeral 5. It's going to look like this. All right, what Section 5 basically says is the basic uniform in the Marine Corps League is a unique cover that identifies the members of the Marine Corps League. Because all other parts of the uniform that are designated in Enclosure 3 are optional, the cover remains the only consistent identifier for a Marine Corps League member, which is why the cover is worn indoors and at appropriate Marine Corps League functions. When a Marine Corps League member is wearing the appropriate uniform, they are considered to be in uniform. Uh, that's why in this video, I am only wearing my Marine Corps League cover to demonstrate that I am still considered to be in uniform, even though I am wearing a Department of Maryland hoodie, I really only need to be wearing the cover to be in uniform. Covers can be purchased at the National uh, Ship Store. They prefer items to be bought uh, via the National website, but you can call National Headquarters to place an order. Again, that's their website. All you have to do is click on the shop button and it'll take you over to the, the ship store site so you can make your purchases. All right, so what I want to start out with first is the detachment red cover. All right, all members of the Marine Corps League, they're authorized to wear this cover. I personally recommend that covers be embroidered with your detachment name and location. We're going to talk a little bit more about this later. Uh, for regular members, the only insignia authorized for wear on the Marine Corps League cover is the one and a half inch anodized solid gold color or polished brass emblem for the Eagle Globe and Anchor. Enlisted style only. No officer EGA is here. All right, you wear the EGA on the left side of your cover, right next to the Marine Corps League. This includes FMF corpsmen and FMF chaplains since they're regular members. Now, if you're an associate member, associate members are authorized to wear the Marine Corps League sunburst insignia in lieu of the Eagle Globe and Anchor. No division pins or other pins are authorized on this Marine Corps League cover. Dog patch, uh, the devil dog patch, if it's authorized, will be worn up front on the left, on the right side of the cover. And uh, we're going to talk about the devil dogs a little bit later on. All right, now we're going to move on. We're going to talk about a department level cover. The department uh, level cover is a red cover with a gold crown. It's going to look like this. All right, members who are elected or appointed to the department level are authorized to wear this cover. Examples would include your department junior vice, the department paymaster, maybe your district vice commandants, the department aide de camps, all your committee chairpersons, any billets included in your department bylaws, uh, and any office the department commandant authorizes during their tenure. Uh, cover should be embroidered with your title and your department name. You may also use a cap strip for your title since you may be moving up in positions and don't want to buy a new cover every time for each new job. This would also be a department level cover. You can see that a little closer. All right, that's a female cover who's the chaplain of the Department of Minnesota. All right, national level covers. National level cover looks like this. It's a gold cover. All right, members elected to the national office um, or appointed to a national office, including staff members, committee members, uh, are authorized to wear this cover. Examples would be like our National Senior Vice Commandant, members of the Uniform Committee, National Sergeant at Arms, and also our National Division Vice Commandants and their entire staff uh, are authorized to wear the gold cover. Again, cover should be embroidered, embroidered with your title, national office that you hold, and again, you can use a cap strip for a title uh, if they have one available for you. Um, most national officers will embroider their covers, I've found. All right. So those are the three types of covers, and there are a few other covers that you might see um, around the league 
um, and I wanted to talk about them now. Right now we have a, there's only one person who wears a white cover and it's going to look like this. That is our national commandant. Okay, he's the only person that's going to wear a white cover. That's our current commandant, Dennis Tobin. Uh, just to give an example of what the white cover looks like, uh, it's a white cover with uh, the yellow braid on it. Okay, and then we have a gold cover with the white crown. This one's a little bit harder to see. This is a past uh, national commandant, um, and honorary past national commandants are authorized to wear gold cover with the white crown. So basically, that would be, you know, if you didn't see in the picture, it's this is gold, and then this part up top here, that's white, okay? They're authorized to wear that cover. Uh, they should be embroidered with the years that they held office so that you know who they are. Um, the last cover you'll see around is a gold cover with a black crown. Um, all past Chief Devil Dogs are authorized to wear this cover, all right, and honorary Chief Devil Dogs. Some of you may be asking, what's a chief devil dog? Well, he or she is equal to the national commandant in an organization called the Military Order Devil Dogs. They're the Fun and Honor Society of the Marine Corps League. Uh, more information can be found on their website, the Military Order of Devil Dogs .org, or you can ask any league member with the MODD patch on their cover. The devil dog patch is only authorized and worn by members of the MODD. It is sewn up front and on the right side of the cover. So why do I mention the Devil Dogs? Well, the MODD structured like the league. Uh, they wear the same covers that we do. A pound is equal to a detachment, so pound officers can wear their red cover, all right? They just have to have their title and their pound name on it. A pack is equal to a department. Pack officers can wear a red cover like this one, all right, with a gold crown. Again, with their title and their pack name on it. Then the kennel is equal to our national level. And kennel officers, they can wear a gold cover with their title embroidered on it. Uh, and that's a kennel level cover. Okay. Um, also, the Chief Devil Dog, he wears a gold cover like this and it just says Chief Devil Dog on it. So you may see that the number one guy in the Devil Dogs, guy or girl in the Devil Dogs, um, they will set uh, Chief Devil Dog on it. And then when they move, they get the black uh, crown when they move into a past uh, Chief Devil Dog position. Now I'd like to talk about lifetime covers. Um, it's basically a cover that's once embroidered uh, that can be worn no matter what position they currently hold in a detachment department or division. Um, it's titled a cover that they can wear after they leave office. Basically on a red cover, it's going to look like this. This is a past detachment commandant cover, okay? Also past pound keepers can wear the red cover with their uh, information embroidered on it. Uh, and you can use the title strip, of course. It has to have your past office held, the years that you held that office, and it must include the detachment or the name of the pound on the bottom like mine does. Okay, then we're going to move on to the red and gold cover. Who's authorized to wear that? Well, past department commandants. So this is a past department commandant cover. Also, past pack leaders are authorized to wear this cover. Covers must be embroidered. Again, you can use a title strip um, with your past title and the years held and must include the name of your department or your pack. And of course, some people, as we saw in the earlier cover, they, they just use the state abbreviation. I have my state spelled out. Uh, some people will spell out the word department. It's just personal preference and what's going to fit on the size of your cover. And then on the gold cover, which I don't have an exact example, but on the gold cover, past National Division Vice Commandants, um, they were elected officers in the league and they're members of the National Board of Trustees. So they are authorized to wear their gold cover when they leave office. It just has to have their past title on it, the years that they held that office, and then of course, the name of the division that they're in. Only those officers that I spoke about are authorized to retain the cover for their previous offices after they leave that office. All other members will revert back to the appropriate cover for the elected or appointed office they currently hold. You must remove the officer identification strip for any prior offices that you no longer hold. 
That means if you're a department officer and you were the junior vice commandant and then you are no longer the junior vice commandant at the department level and you are only hold detachment level offices, you no longer are authorized to wear department level cover. You have to revert back to your detachment level cover. Now, we're going to talk about embroidery. Uh, there's a great diagram in Enclosure 3. It looks just like this. It's got a lot of good information on it. It tells you how to embroider covers, all right? Uh, the preferred font is Franklin Gothic Medium Condensed. That font allows for longer words uh, and names. All letters have to be capitalized. Letters should be 3 eighths inch in height with a quarter inch spacing between the lines. You're allowed three lines of text on a red cover. Uh, two lines of text should be your detachment name and location, which would leave room for a job title on the third line. Uh, your location can be your town, your city, your county, plus your state. But remember, you don't always have to limit yourself to your specific town or your city if your detachment covers a, lo a, larger, excuse me, a larger area. For instance, my detachment meets in a specific city uh, inside Harford County, but we cover down on the whole county. So my detachment we list Hartford County, Maryland. That gives us a broader appeal to recruit new members when they see, oh, I live in Hartford County, even though we have a large county. Um, that way people will come out and they'll want to participate in, uh, with us. Now, life member or life is author also authorized. Again, see uh, diagram three, all right, where you have the word life here. Also where it has job title, you can put life member there, spelled out. They do have cap strips available. Um, life wouldn't be embroidered a half inch from the rear of your cover and a quarter inch down from, from the braid up top here in the back. All right. Uh, life member can be added as, like I mentioned, the third line of text above your detachment and location. Um, again, though, if you use life versus life member, that leaves your third line of text available for a job title. So you can put three lines of text and then put life in the back corner, um, and then you have all of your options uh, available to you. And why do I feel it's important to, important to embroider your cover? Well, at the detachment level, it identifies who you represent and where you're from, you know, what city or what town. My top three reasons are, number one, is your detachment named after a deceased Marine? Then it's an excellent way to honor their legacy. Number two, when you're out fundraising, recruiting, doing Eagle Scout awards, local Marine funerals or Toys for Tots, it will allow the public to know that you are their local detachment. And then lastly, it allows other league members to identify where you're from when attending different league events, such as a department or division or national meeting. Maybe you attend one of our Marine Expos or a Marine Week put on by the Marine Corps. It's a Marine Corps League member's uh, funeral outside your detachment. It allows people to know who you are, where you're from, that you travel the distance to get to that event. Um, and, and it's great just to have your detachment name put out there. That way they can say, wow, we had a lot of support from XYZ detachment at this specific department meeting or at the national convention. So uh, it just bodes well for your detachment and it gets a little publicity for your detachment. Now, since the covers are primary uniform, I recommend that each detachment vote to approve the official wording on their cover. That way, when a new member joins, they know how to embroider their cover correctly. They don't just kind of make a decision, this is how it's going to be done, or they don't see people in your detachment that may have had covers for many years, um, and they're grandfathered in those old covers. So they may have some wording that's incorrectly done. Well, we want to get everybody on the same page and have uniformity across the league. So as new covers are purchased, they should all be, they should all look the same. Okay. So some larger detachments, they may decide to have a certain quantity on hand that are pre-embroidered. That way, when a member joins, you can just boom. Oh, you fit this size cover, seven and a quarter. There you go. There's your cover. They buy it and then they immediately have a cover. Um, maybe you have a quartermaster position at your detachment. Or maybe you want to create one in your detachment, and, and maybe that's his only job is to make sure that he gets the, the proper uniform equipment from the national ship store, okay? You buy the cover for a new member, 
you get it embroidered locally, you take that uh, enclosure three, that document that I showed you, take it to an embroiderer so they can see exactly what they're dealing with, okay? And then you wanna get that cover back to that new member as soon as possible. So again, they're in uniform when they start participating in league functions. What cover do I wear? Well, there are two trains of thought on this uh, and the national bylaws, they do not address this issue, okay? So first opinion is always wear your highest level cover to every event everywhere. And that's one option. The option number two, and it's the one that I sus subscribe to, I wear whatever the appropriate level cover you want based on who you are representing at that current moment. Um, and this mostly applies to events that I do in the public. So number one, am I representing the detachment uh, at an Eagle Scout ceremony or out recruiting fundraising in my local community? I will wear my red cover as a past detachment commandant. It lets the public know that I'm a member of the local area Marine Corps League just by wearing that cover. Number two, if it's a local public event that would benefit from the presence of a department level officer or a national level officer, um, and I have fellow detachment members present and wearing their covers, then I may wear my past department cover or my national cover. Number three, I usually wear my national cover to uh, Marine Corps League events, meetings, uh, no matter what level. Um, just so that way other members that, that may not know who I am can be like, oh, I didn't know you're a national officer and I had this question or that question. Um, and it opens a dialogue that you can talk to people about, uh, you know, what's going on at your department and you can push that information down to the local level. Um, when I attend MODD growls, we call them meetings, um, I am representing the Mideast Division. So I will wear my kennel cover, my kennel gold cover, um, just because that's who I'm representing at the time. Um, and in closing, I hope this episode uh, helps to break down Marine Corps League covers for you. Please share with your fellow League members on social media, maybe hold a training class at one of your detachment meetings, uh, and just play this video. On behalf of my entire training team, again, I'm Craig Reeling. Thanks for watching. Go forth. Gain, train, and retain good Marine Corps League members. Semper Fidelis.